Hi, my name is Nate Nessler, and this is from High Practice Studios. Now, we're about to go over part three of PHP, and we're going to be going over loops and arrays uh, for the setup here. Okay, so I'm going to call this one uh, loops.php. Uh, I'm just going to come in here where I have my other HTML stuff. You know, to save it into wherever your HTML location is for your stuff. And I'm just going to come in here and save it as loops.php. Like that. Alright, and just some more of a quick breakdown here. We're just going to do uh, four loops at first, and then we'll do four each loops, and then we'll do while and do while. Uh, and cover all the loop structures and the arrays. So, let's go over uh, for loop. And um, basically, really doesn't have to be a lot to these. Uh, however, um, if you start using them in more complex situations, well then, I'm going to say num here because count is actually, I like to use the name count for my variables a lot. However, um, count is actually uh, the way you find the length of an ar array. So for, for a function inside of... Uh, uh, PHP. So for that reason, I'm going to kind of avoid using that. So I'm going to change my own coding uh, methods. Sorry, I like spacing these out, but it's a little cramped. Otherwise, I don't like smashing everything together. Um, I'm just going to go 10. And I'm going to say dollar sign num. So I'm saying num for what number we're on when we're looping. Plus plus here. And let's space this out too, make it a little prettier, easier to read, anyways. Uh, open curly brace and a closing curly brace for our structure. Um, and then we can just echo out whatever it is we want to say. And in here, I'm just going to say echo. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, number space like that. And I'm just going to concatenate this with the number. Yeah, that sounds good. Dollar sign num like that. And then can I concatenate this with a break statement? Otherwise, it's going to get kind of nasty, right? And you might notice, oh, why isn't my stuff uh, highlighting? That's because I didn't put in the uh, tags yet <laughs> for PHP. So I need to do that. Uh, and there we are, PHP tags. It's now all beautifully highlighted. And I'm going to skip a, a spaces there, make it a little more compact. Alrighty. So we'll go ahead and do that with our for loop. I'm going to save that. And then I'm just going to come over here, and go to one of my other desktops, and launch up Firefox. Okay, cool. And again, I'm just going to go to my site that I have running on my web server here. In this case, it happens to be Nate. Um, and then I'm going to type that right there. Okay, cool. And then we get number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 right there uh, in our PHP document. Very, very cool. Uh, very, very powerful. And uh, extremely useful. Okay, so besides that one, we also have another one, and it is called for each. Now, for each is really useful uh, when dealing with arrays, and we really haven't gotten to arrays yet. So, uh, yeah, okay, I guess we'll just cover it a little bit, because there's no way I can really go over this, and we'll dive into more arrays here in just a bit. So the only way I can cover for each I'll tell you what, I'm going to hold off on covering for each right now. I'm going to cover the while loops. I'll come back to covering the for each loops after we cover arrays a bit. I really love for each. Man, it makes handling arrays with loops a lot easier. Uh, but basically, you can loop through each element in an array. I'll explain that in a bit. But it's, it's really nice. It is. Uh, they have it in lots of different programming languages, and it's just really, really useful. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> Alright, we can also loop based on a condition um, here. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to do this based on a mathematical value uh, for the while. Um, might seem 
pointless, but uh, you can use while basically loop continues over and over again indefinitely until it reaches its condition. So whenever the condition turns out to be true, uh, we can basically um, finish looping. While the condition is true, it loops, and then when the condition is not true, it stops looping. Basically, there we go. That's the best way to put that. All right, so if I say while, you know, like this, and say open close parentheses, and I put some kind of condition in there for a variable, we can test it. This variable should probably exist ahead of time. Not probably, it should. Uh, so we need to create it. Um, so maybe we have. Uh, dollar sign num1, I don't know, equals 15. Semifold. Alright, we'll keep looping until we reach um, or okay, yeah, let's, let's make it start at 0. That'll be fun. And then we'll make it loop until it's 15 here. And then we'll add our plus operation in there. Uh, so essentially we're kind of like making a for loop with a little while loop. You can do that, um, which is exactly what we're doing. But usually, though, this is done with conditions. If you're going to do some counting like this, it's usually best to use an actual for loop for it. Uh, whereas, that needs to be num1. It doesn't matter if I do post here on this. Actually, you know, I'm going to squeeze this down. I'm going to do our same trick here knowing what the order of uh, execution is. And then we'll say number like this, just like we did a second ago, and do a concatenation, and it'll be dollar sign num1, like so. But I'm going to do a plus plus ahead of time before it gets displayed. And then again, I'm just going to say a dot again operator here. Put it in quotes here. And then we're going to handle our break statement. So br here, slash close brackets like that. Um, so it'd be loops there. Run our loops one again. And there we go. We get this big huge uh, setup here. And it goes 1 to 16. As I told it to go up to um, greater than or equal to 15. Now, if I wanted to go just to 15, then I have to change my condition a bit. And also, I want to add a little space in here because it's kind of annoying having that thing smacked up against it like so. What am I doing? There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> it's whatever. I'll just echo this out. There we go. True PHP style all the way. All right. And basically, Uh, if I come in here, I can get rid of my equals here. And then I'll make it go 1 to 15 like that. And now I'll have my spaces in there, and it'll look nice and pretty. Boom. There we go. Space, and it goes to 15. Now, this is happening because um, essentially uh, we keep doing this loop until num1 is less than 15. So remember, this thing increments before it gets displayed. So if this thing's at zero here, then it's going to display at one. You might be going, oh, I don't like that. I want it to be post. Well, if you do it in post, it's going to be different. So now we have a higher value for our num one than what's being displayed essentially after you know, after it gets it gets incremented after the fact. So if you want that set up, that's totally doable. Repeat. Cool. And we get the same result, which is surprising. 
Not sure. What? Alright. Sure. Okay. Oh, I didn't save. I was about to say. That's not right. There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> 0 through 14. That is more like it. Um, I was like, that's not right. <laughs> um, Alright. So, 0 here, because we said 0 for it to start at, so it displays 0, and then increments it afterwards. So you can see the difference here in the result. It's going to keep looping until it reaches 15. If I want to include 15, I say equals right here, like this, and now it'll be 0 to 15. And if I refresh this, there it is, 0 to 15 now for those numbers. So, very cool. It's a good example of how you can use conditions and tweak these in, and then how you can use your uh, pre and post uh, incrementing to really take control over it in uh, certain ways. But not only do we have a while, we also have a do while. Honestly, if you can write a while properly, you don't even have to really worry about it. A do while just kind of works right out of the box uh, type thing. But just to show you, it's the same thing. It's just it does a test condition at the end of the loop instead of at the top. So it means it's going to automatically do, do the first loop iteration, basically. It's going to do the first loop iteration because, well, be quite frank, it uh, has its test condition at the end, so it kind of has to do it. Uh, all right, and that's valid right there. And the one difference here is we're going to have to say a semicolon at the end of this because this becomes a statement right there. So that's a little different. You know, your while didn't have that before, but your do while does. It has a semicolon at the end of it. So it's considered like one line of code, more or less. And I can just set this back here again to where, say, num1. I need to reset this because otherwise <laughs> we're going to have a problem, and that is that uh, num1 is not going to be equal to 0 anymore, and it'll start out at 15, and this next loop here will not do much of anything, really. So setting that back again, and then also we need to echo out that p statement again too. So something else that's important, we'll need to add that. All right, so it's going to kind of separate that out, kind of like that. Makes it easy and nice to read that code. It's automatically going to do the first loop iteration no matter what. Now I'll prove that even to you. It's crazy. On um, so, so bam. So there you go. We get the same result kind of be expected here and then the issue here we have is that I can actually set num1 here to be at 20 and it won't meet this condition right because that'd be above 15 but since it's 20 it's going to say tw you know it's going to have to do that one no matter what whereas if I put 20 up here you'll never do this loop at all because it'll do the test condition right away at the very beginning and say, no, 20 is over 15. And it won't do it. And I'll prove it. So I'll set this one to 20 here. So this really shows the difference between do and do while. Uh, do while and a while, sorry. And if I do this, pow, I don't get any loop iterations from the other one because the while loop tested at the top. And then I get on the do while, I get one loop iteration before it tests it out. So on this one right here, it says 20. Is 20 uh, less than or equal to 15? No, it's not. So it skips this entire loop. doesn't do anything. On here on the do while here versus the while, we have no test condition at the beginning. So therefore, we have to do this first loop iteration before we can execute the test condition here. For this reason, um, the two main loops that are, or three main loops really that are used a lot are going to be four, for each, and while. Do while isn't typically used that much in programming. Um, it exists in some languages. Some languages decided th that it was just so rarely used that they just took it out of the language altogether. And you can't even do a do while. Um, other languages still keep it around, but not you don't see it that often. It's pretty rarely used. Uh, for, for each, and while are used a lot.
they're used a lot. 4-H is used a whole lot. 4 is used a whole lot, and so is WAL. Uh, 4-H serves a really good purpose, and uh, it's very specialized, but uh, it's one of those things where it's used a lot because that thing that's specialized in, people use it a lot <laughs> type deal. So 4-H uh, is definitely, in the condition when you're, when you're dealing with arrays or something like that, a 4-H is definitely preferred over a 4-loop. It simplifies and shortens your code, makes it easier to read, easier to code, easier to work out the logic. And so it's definitely preferred by uh, about a lot of programmers that use it. So we'll get into that in just a bit. But the way this works, let's probably break down these loops a little better, help make the uh, logic a little clearer here. I'm just going to set these back to a zero here again, so that way it's, you know, looping through its loop iterations. But essentially what's happening here is we're saying that num1 here, or say, let's just say num here is equal to 1, and it's going to keep looping until it's less than or equal to 10. And then we're going to keep incrementing num every time we loop. So every time we loop, we just repeat this code over and over again, repeating it one after another after another after another times here or as that goes. And then so we say number here and then we say what num it is. And and we're saying go to the next line each time. So num1 here is going to be 1 for the first loop iteration. So it says number 1. And so that's why when we come over here for this first one it's num1. I tell you what, I'll even make it a little easier. We can just echo out what loop we're de dealing with here each time, okay? So uh, echo Let's say like for each loop, and then we'll just throw a br into that for our break here. Cool. And then this will just make it, you know, a little easier to make out what's going on here. This code instead of seeing like a bunch of loops for no apparent reason. <laughs> uh, no. Not for each. Ah, I got four each on the brain. All right. Wow. We do have a do while, and then last but not least here, we're going to have a for each loop here in just a bit. I'm going to be doing it next. I'm going to just wrap that in when I start going over the uh, arrays. So I'm going to kind of do arrays and wrap in that. It'll make it a lot, it'll make a whole lot of sense. Uh, it'll just be a for loop. There we go. Like that. All right, cool. Let me save that real quick. And then when we update this over here, we'll get nice little titles with each part here. So this is the for loop, this is the while loop, and this is the do while loop here. And then we're gonna have a for each loop down there. And let's go ahead and space that out too while we're at it. There we go. Okay, cool. So, I'll put colons on these. I don't know, I'm just making it a little prettier. You could bold it. I mean, that's kind of the cool part about this, really. Since we are dealing with HTML and everything, we can take all the advantages of CSS or whatever we want, really, and come in here and bold and underline it and all that fun stuff. So, you know, I could easily come in here to this title and do that. So, it's that's kind of cool, really. I'm going to do a bold underline and italicize like that. And I'm going to do this quickly because I'm lazy. Sorry, I just want to punch this up. 
It's the artist in me. <laughs> I have to make it look better. Alright. I don't have to have to, I just want to. Makes it more difficult after you've been doing a lot of art to sit there and not make something look better. <laughs> That's all there is to it, I guess. Alright, and then last one, not least here, but like that. Alright, and essentially we're done with making it look better. We come back over here again, real quick. Now those titles uh, kind of stand out more. So there we go. A little prettier. Alright. So. Basically, what happens here is that every time this thing goes through it on every loop iteration, meaning every time it does one of these loops for this code here, it's going to go through it. So, on the first loop iteration, num is equal to 1. On the next loop iteration, uh, well, on the first loop iteration, and then so num is going to be actually equal to 1. And then number here when it goes out it says number, and then the value of num is displayed here. So that's, that's one, and then we break to the next line. Then it loops again, and in which case it gets incremented for num from one. So then num is going to be two now, and then so number here says number, and then two next line, and then it says all right, incremented again. So num goes from two to being three. Echo number display num number three so it's going to say number three next line num gets incremented becomes four echo out number displays the number four next line num here gets incremented goes from four to them five num a number here five goes to the next line number here gets in incremented from five to six Number here display six, go to the next line. Number here gets incremented in seven, number here displays seven, go to the next line, number becomes eight, number here displays eight, go to the next line, number increments again to nine. Number here increments uh it says number here uh displays the nine, go to the next line, and we're doing this test condition each time we loop here. So now when we say number equals 10 here, then we say, all right, number here display, num 10, break line, it comes back, it checks it, is it 10? 10 is uh, OK, because it's uh, less than or equal to it. So we get up to 10 here. But the problem is the moment we hit 11, 11 is no longer OK. So the moment we hit 11, we have to leave this loop. And so therefore, number never becomes 11 to be displayed. Because the moment it does become 11, we leave this loop. So, or I shouldn't say number doesn't become 11. I should say that number never gets displayed here with this echo statement for 11 because it's outside of this test condition. We only go up to where it equals 10. You know, it's less than or equal to 10. That is the condition here for just continuing to loop. And so that's kind of how it works. And that's how all these work, really. This one just keeps repeating this code over and over again until it's less than or equal to fit, until it's greater than 15, essentially. Um, basically, if it's no longer less than or equal to 15, then it's no longer going to loop. On the do while, same thing. It's going to keep looping until it's no longer, you know, less than or equal to 15. And that's how that loop works. So that's essentially how these loops work. And it sounds um, fairly simple. Some of the logic gets more complex when you get into loops. If you're not familiar with loops from other programming languages, this might take you a while to get a hang of it. Um, loop code can, especially when you start putting loops inside of loops and things of that nature, some of this stuff can get a little more complicated, a little more hairy. 
But as you work with it more and more, you'll find loops getting easier and easier for you. It's a really great way of compacting code and handling uh, tremendous amounts of code without having to handwrite it individually. Not, not to mention it lets you uh, also uh, spontaneously respond to certain conditions and things of that nature to where you can repeat the code based on a certain number of times, based on a certain condition or something of this nature. And in this way, your code is dynamic. Uh, we'll do it, deal with it when we get to databases because we'll definitely get like back a whole set of records and how many records we get back based on certain criteria you don't know that ahead of time there's no way of knowing that and so you have to loop through all the records you get back and uh, for this reason uh, it's extremely useful to have a loop because there's no way to program that ahead of time you cannot program for something you don't know what it's going to be ahead of time so the only way to do that is to make it react to the situation and that's essentially what we do when we do with the database programming so these while loops here and these do while loops and the for loops and the for each loops are extremely useful for uh, making this process a lot easier and typically for that you want to use a for each loop for dealing with arrays so uh, but you could also use a while loop and continue the while uh, loop while not at the end of the records I mean you could do there's lots of different ways of handling this stuff but uh, it's quite powerful and quite useful all right uh, so with that said, let's start hitting up uh, our arrays and let's look at an example of a for each loop because we talked about some of these others, but we really haven't done a um, an array yet. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of come down here and add this in. So first, I need to make an array variable. I'm going to say a for array uh, for my array variable. Let's name it a. All right. Uh, and then you know we have a couple of choices here. And one of the things we're going to want to do is have um, oh I don't know um, how about Linus let's see and uh, Charlie all right Linus Lucy and Charlie here we're gonna be in our array so we have three elements here the cool thing about this is that I can actually come in here now and I could say uh, for each all one word like that open close parentheses afterwards uh, and then I can say in here a dollar sign you know what I don't like a dollar sign I'm gonna call this names names makes a lot of sense um, that's a better way that's a much better one all right and this could be usernames, this could be a lot of stuff, right? You can you could handle a whole list of people. So this, this makes sense uh, from a standpoint of uh, doing web development. You can say as, I don't know, let's create a variable called value because it kind of makes sense. We're going to be accessing, or uh, let's do name. Name's a good one. So I'm getting a name from a list of names. Always like that one. That's a good way of approaching this. Um, so this is, you can start to see why. I absolutely love for each. Just love this whole programming structure. Um, and you just say echo here. I'm close. Like that. Semicolon. Uh, and then I can throw in my break statement, which I definitely want to do. I need to BR this without a doubt. All right. And I'm just going to echo out their name here. And let's just say name. It's just going to put a name on each line as it loops through it. And it's going to loop through all the names and displaying basically each name one by one through the loop until it's done. And that's it. That's how a for each works. And the cool thing about this array is essentially it's like having multiple variables in one. We can pack a whole list of values into one variable name. And then we can loop through each individual element in that array. That's what's called elements. These are all the technical terms for this. But if I come over here now and I say 
refresh, and I have made an error of some sort because I'm getting nothing at all. Yay! Fun times. Yes, I didn't put a semicolon here. Oh. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, you must put semicolons at the end of your statements. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Now we have Linus, Lucy, and Charlie. Ta-da! There they are. Unfortunately, I put the P closing and opening tags around the title, and it spaced it on both ends, which I really don't want to do. So I need to do that there, and then put this as a slash P ahead of time, maybe. Yeah, should done as a separate line of code with an echo statement, but oh well. There we go. So we get Linus, Lucy, and Charlie here. This is pretty cool. I mean, we consider it. This is pretty neat. Uh, and then so you can have an array. You get back the whole value of arrays that get dumped from some function or whatever for its return type, like we were doing earlier when we were doing our functions. You can have it return a whole list of array elements. And then you could just loop through all the elements in that array that gets returned from that function with a for each. So you just go through here, like in this case, you know, maybe you get back names, and you say as name, and you just go through all the names that got returned from a function. Really, really cool, really powerful, and really useful. And you'll do this kind of stuff all the time. So this is why for each is used so much. This is why it's so popular and why it's so cool. It really is quite neat. Uh, and quite powerful too for that matter. But let's look at um, a little bit of how this works a bit more and uh, kind of look at how do we access these different elements of this array manually. Um, so this might help make a little bit more sense how we're breaking this down here. And uh, We'll look at how do we handle this a bit more. So I could literally come through here if I wanted to and echo out each array element one by one myself. And maybe this kind of help break down, make it more sense as to what's going on here with all this. All right, semicolon. And, and then in here inside of uh, dollar sign names, essentially what I can do, I put this in brackets. And I say zero. Zero will be the first element in that array. Those computers start counting at zero. Uh, it, you always say zero for your first element because they do. They they always start counting at zero for a computer. Just about, not always, but daggone close to it. Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the time they do. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, And so this will let me access each individual uh, name here for this array. And then I'm just going to kind of put in another echo statement, kind of like what we have here. So this way we hand access this. So this is not a for each loop. This is a array by hand, meaning that we're individually accessing each element. Typically this is not done, but this is how you do it. You might do this inside of a loop or something like that, or maybe grabbing out each individual value from this in a loop to display it or to pass it in to uh, HTML to then generate the HTML based on the different elements coming from the array, or maybe you're, you know, you get the, this kind of stuff as far as that goes, but typically you're not hand assigning each element of an array unless you're, you need to. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. It, it happens. But anyways, that's how you access it. You can actually assign it to if you wanted to. If I wanted to uh, come in here and change these values here, you know, I could uh, change. Maybe we're gonna throw Lucy out of the gang here. So she was Char it was Linus, Lucy, and Charlie a second ago. So if we wanted to change Lucy, what we'd do is we'd say dollar sign names one because she's the one position right she's the second person in this array Lucy is right here so since she's the second one we start counting zero that'd be Linus 
then Lucy is 1, and then Charlie is 2. So if I wanted to replace Lucy, I have to go to element number 1 here, and I'm going to say, which is the second element in the array, and I'm going to assign this to, say, Snoopy. And say semicolon. And I'm going to do this ahead of time, just to show you how you can manipulate these arrays more. Like that. Save. And now it's saved. We'll pop over here, load it. We have Linus Snoopy Charlie now. And we no longer have Lucy in there. So Snoopy replaced Lucy uh, in this array that we just handled by hand. And so you can see how you can actually change the values. Uh, while you're using it. So not only can you display and read the values, we can also change them in the array as far as that goes. Um, there's one other one that we need to really go over uh, that we haven't gone over yet and that's associative arrays. So let's look at how associative arrays work and also let's look at finding the length of array. Finding the length of array is really important. Uh, you'll use it a lot for a lot of different things and uh, it's extremely, extremely useful. There's a lot of times where you need to know how many elements are in the array or right? how many people did we get a match for from our database or how many you know something like that so let's look at first real quick getting the array length so I'm just going to create a new variable called array length And this is going to equal to count. That's parentheses. Don't worry, I'll fix this. I know I didn't code it right yet. Uh, and then dollar sign names, like that. And this needs to have a dollar sign in front of it. There we go. That's more like it. And then we can echo out uh, array length. The dollar sign in front would be nice since it's a variable, right? <laughs> Keep doing that. You don't use dollar signs in other languages. Okay, dot here like this, and then we say in quotes, open br slash close that tag there. Close with a semicolon like so. Awesomeness. All right. So with that, that covers essentially how to get the count, or should anyways. I just come over here to Firefox. We get back three because we have three elements. Check it out: Linus, Lucy, Charlie. One, two, three. We get back three, starting at zero, one, and two with the array elements. It comes out to be in three though, in total. Right, so that's how we can find out how many elements are in an array. All right, last but not least, let's start going over associative arrays and then two-dimensional arrays, and then we're done. I'm not going to uh, discuss this much further beyond that. All right, that, that's nice. I get glass the text editor. Thank you. Um, so let's look at associative arrays. Associative arrays are pretty cool. It lets you associate a particular name with each element. Um, so if I say something like, uh, see, how, let's call it a variable like name age or something, <laughs> or, or uh, ages. That's cool. Let's do ages array like this, and then I like this. Uh, so maybe um, we could do this a little differently, where we say uh, Linus. Maybe Linus is actually equal to um, eight years old. I don't know. Something like that. And then eight's going to be covered in quotes like this, comma. And then, um, so that's Linus there. Uh, and then maybe uh, Lucy. Maybe Lucy is. Uh, 
like nine years old. I have no idea. I'm just making this up. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you actually know what their ages are, well, my apologies. I, I have no clue. I'm just making this up as an example. And let's just say Charlie is seven years old, which is probably not realistic because probably all these guys are probably close to the same age since I think they're all in the same classes and everything. But we're going to assume that they have each one has a different age here. Just doesn't need to be. I just want to have a little variation in the data here. So let's say he's seven years old. I, I, I really don't know. Um, close parentheses, semicolon. Like that. And, well, this is kind of cool because afterwards I can essentially access this data and uh, I can refer to the individual person to get to their uh, data. So for instance, say I wanted to know Charlie's age, I could literally come in here and say something like uh, Echo, almost sounds like military Echo Bravo, <laughs> Echo, <laughs> like that. Um, Alright, check that out like that, and then say something like uh, I want to know Charlie's age. So Charlie age is and then in here what I can do is I can literally say dollar sign ages this and then I can say open bracket right because we're at accessing an element and then it's a named element so I can come in here and literally say Charlie like that and so this can have some implications like if, if I know what the username is and I know it's Charlie or whatever I could literally pass Charlie directly into this array as another variable inside of this variable here, inside this brackets like this, and it would choose Charlie, and I could display who the user's name is. I'll do that in just a second. Uh, but this actually has some really useful implications to this. Okay, so we get Charlie is age seven. Seven, and I probably should say years old like that period like that so okay so make it a little prettier there but what if I wanted to make this a little more dynamic I could do that um, for instance I could come in here and say the user's name username is equal to maybe it's Charlie like that right cool so this means I could come in here like this and this will make it a little neater here as far as that goes. Let's say dot. So this gives also an example of why you need uh, double quotes and single quotes capabilities here inside PHP. Because here I need this apostrophe S and I don't want to escape it so I just use double quotes. And it works really well for this example. But since I'm accessing this individual part inside of here I could actually say username yet again in there like that. And that's what I talking about passing the variable with inside of the variable in order to access the individual element that named array. So if I say save here and I pull up my Firefox, run it, bam, I get Charlie's age is seven years old. Now this is really cool because essentially whatever I set the username to is what I'm going to get for whose age it is and who, whose name it is that gets displayed. Meaning I can come in here and switch this over to Linus next here. If I could type I could. No, not Linux. <laughs> uh, Linus. Come over here to Firefox and update again. Check it out. Linus's age is eight years old. So this is really kind of cool. You know, you can use a name in order to select the information I want to out of the array, but I also can use it for displaying it. And this way, I can tie data together uh, in a meaningful way. So associative arrays are pretty neat. They're pretty daggone cool, and are quite powerful. And that's an example of how you can go about uh, doing that. All right. And let's look at a two-dimensional array because, yeah, uh, this is going to get a little crazier here. So, um, really wish that would stop that. Thank you. Okay, last but not least.
All right, so for my two-dimensional array, I'm going to say something like, um, oh, gosh, let's do um, cars, I guess. Let's do some cars, yeah. All right, dollar sign, let's call it cars, plural, equals, and this is going to get a little bit hairy, but start with the open parentheses and it's going to go till we have a closing parentheses on this and it's going to have a semicolon at the end open close parentheses not curly braces but parentheses and it's going to kind of you know tab that in because this gets a little interesting okay so first one here let's say it's Ford it's going to be our maker and then we can start doing different Ford cars. And this has to be associated with an array. And so it has its own set here. One of these. And then this is going to be comma because we're going to do another one. Ford. Um, Honda. Let's do a Honda. Like that, and then um, and again we do. I'm only going to do a couple here because I don't want to take a long time breaking this down. You could add more and more of these if you wanted to, but let's just keep it short and simple. All right, so Ford has the Mustang. Right? I think we can all agree on that. And then. Um, Let's see here, Ford F-150, right? Truck. It's a truck. Uh, so you get an idea. I'm not going to do that many of them. Uh, we have the Honda F uh, Fit. It is one of their cars. And, oh, I don't know Honda cars as well. Um, Oh gosh, what's another Honda car? Honda. Hmm. Well, we don't need. Uh, it helps though if we do. We don't have to have the same number of elements. We can actually have different number of elements in here. Uh, so I could just get it with the fit. I just can't remember. <laughs> right now my mind's going blank. I can't think. I probably know a bunch of Honda cars and I can't think of it right now off the top of my head. Fit is definitely one of them. Um, but I can't remember the other ones. Oh, they got some cool ones too. I can't think of the name of them off the top of my head right now though. Oh well. So say we have this for our array. So these different ones have these different elements in it. So what this means is if I want to display them essentially uh, I can do so if I like, uh, and I have to access the individual elements within that array. So this is like a combination of associative array and non-associative array. So here, but if I say echo, and again we're just going to do our br tags in here. Without a dog in it, thank you very much. Uh, and then I can say something like, um, for my, uh, I could say dollar sign cars, like this, and then I could say open brackets, open brackets, space dot, like that, and then on the first part here, we have to give it its name. So in the name here, I can say something like Ford. And in the next part here, I can say which one I want to access. So say I want to access the first element of Ford, or the first car of the Fords. I can. And so I could actually have something like car, let me know which, or, or maybe manufacturer, or something like that. Uh, and then I could basically select who the car group is, and then 
access all the individual cars in that group by looking through it. I could find the length of it, right? So I could find the length of how many are in the Ford. I mean, it's pretty cool what you could do here. And I get back Mustang. If I came back here and switched this up again to a 1, like that, I'm now going to get F-150. So, very, very cool and very, very powerful. That's an example of how multi multi-dimensional arrays work. Uh, you could actually make it, a lot of times it's used to generate a table. So if I wanted to display a whole table inside of HTML, I could have all these uh, elements stored inside of a two-dimensional array and, and then propagate a whole entire HTML table with all the different elements in it as we loop through each part and grabbing each piece and thus generate a table. And so that's how you're going to use PHP to do that. You're going to use a multi-dimensional array, a uh, two-dimensional array in this case, Multi-dimensional, it could be more, it could be a, a three-dimensional array. Of course, you're not going to be able to display that in a table because that's X, Y, and Z, basically, uh, as far as the data goes. Uh, and you can go beyond that, four-dimensional, five-dimensional, six-dimensional, on and on and on. So however many dimensions you want it to be. Uh, but with that, essentially, that covers, uh, I think, just about everything as far as loops and arrays go without getting into specifics of some other things but uh, like sorting and stuff like that I'm not getting into that right now we'll worry about that later but um for the most part that covers arrays and loops well uh, it's been fun uh, my name is Nate Nessler and this is for Hyperactive Studios thank you very much until next time which there will be <laughs>